good afternoon or good evening on this wonderful Wednesday. Um, today we'll be talking about James Monroe, the fifth president of the United States. And uh, if just to review with you guys, Washington was the first, Adams was the second, Jefferson was the third, Madison was the fourth, and Monroe was the fifth. Also, um, being that today's Wednesday, tomorrow will be Thursday of Holy Week, there will be no slide presentation tomorrow or Friday or Monday so we'll pick up again on Tuesday um, so uh, enjoy your Easter weekend and so here we go all right first we're going to start with yesterday's questions what is a penna part of and that's CNN 10 who was the United States General at the Battle of New Orleans and then what pirate helped the United States at the battle? And that, of course, is a picture of Jackson Square. So who was James Monroe? Well, first off, he served in the Revolutionary Army, and he's the last president to do so. So as we talk about presidents, we'll have different milestones. We'll have presidents born in a log cabin, and we'll get to the last president born in a log cabin. It's little little milestones like that that uh, go along with the presidency. So this is the last president that actually served in the Revolutionary Army. Uh, he studied law under jo Thomas Jefferson. Um, so back then you didn't go to law school. You picked a lawyer and you studied law under that lawyer. Uh, he was part of the Constitutional Convention and he did vote against the Constitution and the reason he voted against the Constitution be was because there was no Bill of Rights. In Washington's administration he served as ambassador to France um, and then he negotiated the Louisiana Purchase under Jefferson's presidency and he served as Madison's Secretary of War and Secretary of State. There's a different kind of president. First thing is you'll never see Monroe with a wig on. He had um, sort of flaming red hair, uh, not not light red hair, but very dark red hair. And uh, a lot of times people wore wigs because of lice. Um, they had been infested with lice and they had lost patches of hair and that's why they would wear wigs. Well, he didn't have to wear a wig. And so he never wore a wig. You'll never see any, you'll see, um, you'll see portraits of him with gray hair, but you'll never see a portrait with him with a wig on. Uh, his philosophy of the presidency was, I'm going to pick the very best people in each area, and they're going to do their job. So he wasn't a micromanager president. He always made sure to do, uh, to pick people and let them do their jobs. He was so popular that anywhere he went, people would line up for miles to wave at him, to wave at his carriage. Um, he was so popular. He was popular among the Federalists and he was popular among the Democratic Republicans. So he crossed party lines. Everybody loved James Monroe. Um, so one of the things that happened during his presidency, General Jackson was assigned to um, Georgia and Florida Indians were coming across along with Spanish mutineers and causing trouble. So Jackson invaded Florida. And instead of recalling Jackson or disciplining Jackson, um, he simply told Spain that they either had to control their Indians and their marauders or they had to get out. And guess what? They got out. Uh, John Quincy Adams negotiated the Adams Onus Treaty. Uh, and so we acquired the rest of Florida in that treaty. Spain left uh, Florida. Uh, John Quincy Adams also issued the Monroe Doctrine, so he's responsible for the Monroe Doctrine, but because Monroe is president, he's given credit for it. He signed the Missouri Compromise, which uh, in one sense wasn't great because it allowed slavery in Missouri, but on the other sense, it 
limited slavery to not going above the the thirtieth, the thirty sixth parallel. Um, he's known, his presidency is known as the era of good feelings, and then as our slideshow shows, he started the return of slaves to Africa. So, freed slaves who wanted to go back to Africa were given ship passage back there, and he started a country for them called Liberia in the uh, eastern tip, I'm sorry, in the western tip of Africa, and its capital is named Monrovia after Monroe. Um, Monroe's doctrine stated that no foreign power could interfere with countries in North or South America, and such actions would be deemed unfriendly to the United States. So in other words, we would take military action against any power that came to take over a country. And the reason this happened is a lot of Central and South American countries were breaking away from Spain and Portugal. Spain and Portugal were very weak at the time, but Germany was growing in influence, so was France, and so was England, and they wanted these countries. And the United States they said, no, you can't have these countries. These countries are free and independent, just like the United States of America. And we still use the Monroe Doctrine today. Uh, when a country interferes in South America or Central America, we pull out the old Monroe Doctrine and say, you can't do that. So what was the era of good feelings? Um, our little square, uh, uh, if you look under our little picture, it says, we owe allegiance to no crown. Um, yes, this will be on the test. So if you're going to any public school, this is on the star test. What is the era of good feelings? And it was the resulting national pride felt by the US citizens after the War of 1812. So I've, I hope you repeat that with me. Um, and in my humble opinion, it spurred on the westward expansion. Lastly, I wanna talk about the Missouri Compromise. I picked the slide that shows the line that goes across um, so nothing above that line could have slaves in it, except for the state of Missouri. Um, so what that means is, if there's no slavery above the 36th parallel, all these new states that are going to come into the country can't have slavery. And this was negotiated by Henry Clay because there was a real blockage in Congress about slavery. Many members of Congress want slavery completely wiped out. If that happened, the South would completely lose its economic ability. So um, as a result of that, um, he negotiated this contract. Now, I used to have students boo Henry Clay's name every time we saw it because it kind of opened up the slavery to last a little bit longer. Uh, slavery would have probably died out or been, been outlawed if it hadn't been for the Missouri Compromise. But on the other end, maybe the Civil War would have been um, 40 years earlier. So, you know, you just don't know, you can't guess on history what would have happened if something different had happened.